What's up, everybody? Frank the Geeky Gecko here, back on another Monday Night Live. So we're going to do the same thing tonight. We are going to answer your questions and show off some cool geckos. So apologize for the late start. We actually are working with another employee right now and uh, getting to uh, show that person around a little bit and seeing what kind of becomes of that. But Whitney is going to be making her way over here shortly. She is going to be reading the questions while I answer your questions. So thank you, Matthew. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know we love um, uh, hanging out with you guys, and that's really cool that you could just view it as TV. I'm going to be cleaning some cool geckos today, showing off some stuff. Uh, let me go grab a chair for the, the wife, um, and she is going to read off the questions while we go through the live stream. So... That's what we're gonna do so what's up everybody hope you the start of your week is going good I know Mondays are always a little bit rough you know rolling into the start of the work week and all but let me get you guys in position to show all the animals here so there we go we're going to go through baby cleaning today, so you'll get to see some cool stuff. There's that. I apologize, I can't see the, the questions right now until uh, Whitney gets here. And Whitney is going to show off. She's going to read the questions. And Whitney's here now. Yay! So you, same thing, hon, if you go to YouTube, you'll find our live, currently live. Mm -hmm. And then you can start reading off the questions that I have. Thank you for the worms. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it? So if you guys are ever in Arizona and interested in volunteering or working with us, let us know. Yeah, just go to YouTube, go to our channel right there and then it will show the live that we are currently on so if the water is not really dirty like this I can actually just dump it where and then fill it um, so your channel and then it will show the live that is currently playing or you could go to your videos and it will show the live that is currently playing so Pretty cool little critter right here. And then there are a few questions, so you might have to like backtrack through so a little bit. Um, and just mute it, yeah. So you just hit the, yeah, that button there. Master says, I'm currently saving up to maybe buy a female off only tang or a male off scaled arts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are two good breeders. Uh, we have we have uh, our male from uh, scaled art reptiles right now, and we're happy to use him. And then um, Barry from only tangs has some really cool stuff as well. So... Make sure you do your due diligence, ask your questions, take note of genetic lines. A lot of the best quality tangerines that you find in the hobby, they're going to be related to the Mandarin gene, which is related to uh, NDBE, Nor Desire Black Eyes. And Nor Desire Black Eyes is a great trait. It's actually a darkening trait. It first started popping up like around the tangerine collection to my knowledge, so it... Um, it does some pretty cool stuff. It blacks out the eyes, but it also comes with some potential health risks. Like females will have low or no fertility. Some babies will have kind of squinted and closed eyes. So you'll want to ask Barry about that and you'll want to ask Scaled Art about that. If you're unfamiliar with NDBE, just make sure you ask those guys if the lineage you're buying from has a possibility of NDBE in it. Now, the gecko that we purchased from Scaled Art 
proved out to actually be het for NDBE. So some of the geckos that we have here are going to be um, possible NDBE, but we will keep that line, that lineage, separate from geckos that we know are not het NDBE. Now you might be asking, why would you even work with NDBE if it has some potential uh, health risks or health issues? And um, the question is, I mean, the answer is that it produces some really, really cool animals. And you never know when you mix combinations, you never know what kind of cool stuff you're going to get out of it, you know. Um, and also the health issues are not that severe issues, right? Um, I have yet to really experience uh, NDBE in my collection myself. So I'll definitely keep you updated with like how many have health issues and the, ex the extent of the health issues. But the two main issues are kind of squinty eyes and um, infertility with females. But they produce some of the best quality tangerines, which is why a lot of breeders still work with tangerines that are linked to NDBE or possible NDBE is because those bloodlines statistically over the years have created some of the best quality tangerines. So. Gonzo's geckos, did you have a gecko escape? <laughs> yes, we did. Thank you for looking, noticing that. They, they, no, uh. No, he's. Oh, oh. Because the adult jumped out. It jumped out. Oh, right. yeah. okay. Yeah, we do have the adults are able to jump out of. Actually, I'm cleaning the babies right now, but they're getting so big. Like, look, I think, I think this guy was for sale and no one purchased her yet. So this girl is just growing and growing and growing, but that's the benefit, right? If a girl doesn't sell, she's immediately useful for breeding as soon as she's uh, sexually mature. So that's why this year incubating for females, it's a really uh, big opportunity when you incubate for females, you could turn them right into breeders. Hey, Matthew, the Morph Market, and he just came upon a bunch of our stuff. Oh, nice. Thanks for that oh. shout-out, Matthew. Yeah, I think a lot of our stuff got pushed to, like, the last pages because most of our posts have been up now for, uh, like, a month and a half. Month, month and a half. So, again, here's another Frosty Turk Lemon Frost Project. So, pretty cool. Mixing this into all kinds of stuff, you know, trying to produce... Healthy geckos, healthy animals. Again, that is the goal with this project, to produce healthy animals. I just want to say we really appreciate all you guys tuning in and watching um, and supporting us. We really want to be able to do what we do without you guys. Yes. And you guys hooked Whitney. Whitney now likes the live streams. And she enjoys doing them with us, which is extremely helpful to me because I can just answer questions while she reads and she gets to participate and get her voice in. Right, hon? You like it? or? Yeah. Yeah, she likes it, so. Let's see what's new. I'm trying to think what's new with us over here to share with you guys. But, I mean, just growing and expanding, right? A lot of our geckos are... Getting older and growing, expanding. Um, that's why we've began to take steps towards employment and seeking for extra help around here to help balance things out a little bit. And so that Whitney and I can go on vacation and uh, <laughs> everything will be okay. Okay, this guy's going away. Frankie uh, had to give up coming to Colorado with me during Christmas break last year. So. So she really wants me to go with her. Hopefully this year. This year I can go. Hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Nate Geckos, uh, for. Um, 
I mean, we, you know, like we, uh, we welcome discussion, whether it be heated discussion. Uh, he says, sorry about people hating on you on Instagram. People just don't understand. And yeah, you know, they don't understand. Um, yeah, we welcome opposition. We welcome an opposite viewpoint, but not if a person is not willing to talk about it. And that's usually the, the case nine times out of ten with all of the people making their comments. They're not willing to talk. They're not willing to listen like we are willing to talk and we're willing to listen to their input. I mean, two heads are better than one. I've had a lot of great conversations with people opposed to the lemon frost gene and whatnot. Um, some great points they bring up, great things to think about. But that only happens if both people are willing to not bash each other and, and have a communication. But unfortunately, 90% of the people that are, are commenting don't care about having a conversation. They just want to spew their viewpoint and then that's it. So I have a new tactic. Um, my original tactic was, you know what? If these guys are going to be really, really nasty, I'm going to take a screenshot of their nastiness and post it on my social media and tag them in it. So that all of their followers can see how nasty these guys are behind closed doors, right? Yeah. Can I, but can I talk about that? Well, yeah, that's a little passive aggressive, right? So I don't want to be any type of aggressive towards these guys. I actually just want to show love and support where I see that love and support can be made. For example, I recently started commenting how nice of geckos these people have and to like follow their page and like them because they do have good stuff. Outside of our disagreements, they do have great quality geckos, and they're people that I think that I would I would interact with wonderfully, uh, given the chance. You know, I've I've never seen like negative stuff about them, uh, besides them being a little bit you know uh, closed minded or whatever. But go ahead, hon. Did I can... tell them about posting on your mom's page? Um, it was it was on my page, but it was they were commenting back towards my mom. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I mean, just, just like childish stuff. Like, what does his mom have to do with this? Like, really, people? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, like, inflare or get anybody fired up because I'm trying to go past the fired up point. I, and I told, I told them, too. I was like, everybody loves a little bit of drama, right? That's why we watch dramatic shows like The Shark Tank, um... Bachelor in Paradise, Whitney and I's favorite, Bachelor in Paradise. We love the drama, right? I'm willing to bring an opposite viewpoint if someone else is willing to talk about their viewpoint because I think people like you would enjoy the conversation. I think that you would like the dramaticness of both of these sides opposing um, each other's viewpoint. But that will never happen if somebody's not willing to talk. And I've told all of these guys, hey, I'm willing to talk. I'm willing to have you on a live stream and then we could, everyone can make a decision for themselves. You have some very great viewpoints. Everyone who's in opposition against the Geeky Gecko Creations, I've had some conversations. They have some great perspective. They have some great viewpoints that I would like for you guys, our audience to hear. But you'll never hear those viewpoints if those people are never willing to humble themselves, come onto our show, talk it out with us in a civilized manner instead of posting memes about each other, ba um, bashing each other behind the scenes, and like Whitney was saying, attacking my family. Some of these people have gone so low to attack my mom in conversation. Like That's just not the way that this hobby is going to grow. We can be opposed to each other. I can have an opposite viewpoint as you. Um, that's okay. Um, but most of these people, it's not okay. They just want you to have their viewpoint. And if you don't have their viewpoint, then they're completely closed-minded to anything you have to say. So, again, if any of those people are willing to humble themselves, come on our show, talk it out with us, I would more than be happy to do that. Um, if we could have a civilized conversation, just like I'm doing right now, and not, you know, naysay against each other and, and bash talk each other. So... Yeah, I mean, now when he says, like, humble themselves, you know, it's not like you're going to come on and we'll be like, oh, 
we're right and you're wrong. No, yeah, I'm open to your viewpoint. Yeah. I've had conversations behind the scenes with a couple of people with opposing viewpoints. And at the end of the conversation, we still don't agree. But at least we're a little bit closer towards collaboration and a little bit closer towards mutual respect towards each other. Um, you know, so. There's aspects of the hobby that everyone can agree on. Right. Um, you know, and then you just agree to disagree. That's what, that's what marriage is. That's what any deep relationship is. Yeah. I actually heard a really good point a long time ago on another person's live stream. They said, okay, Geeky Gecko Creations has one perspective. XYZ Company has another perspective. These people have two different perspectives and they've been in debate against each other. Do you know who's coming after both of these companies? PETA. P-E-T-A. They want to take away your animal rights. I don't know if you guys know this, but P-E-T-A, PETA, and other animal rights organizations, they're going to the extreme level right now where they want to act like a leopard gecko is as dangerous as a spitting cobra. That's the level that they want to go to. They want to take away your reptiles. Let me get this out there. They want your leopard geckos gone. They want your crested geckos gone. They want your bearded dragons, whatever, uh, ball pythons, corn snakes. They want all of that gone. Any animal that could reproduce in the United States and live, they want gone. That's almost every single reptile in existence, right? Now, instead of two different reptile companies who have opposing views, instead of them bashing each other and, and talking bad about each other, at the end of the day, PETA is coming to take both of your reptiles away. So what good does it do for two companies to be in opposition against each other when PETA and other animal rights groups are coming after both of you guys? You might as well team up together and move forward together. Another point, if, if PETA catches you naysaying and back-talking each other in the hobby, they're going to use that as ammunition to prove their point in court. They're going to go before the judges and be like, look, X company has negative stuff to say about Y company. The, the people in this hobby cannot agree with each other. They cannot get along with each other. They have opposing care perspectives against each other. We should take both. We should take all of their rights away. Not just one company, not just another company. We want to take every reptile company's rights away and every reptile owner's rights away. That's who the real enemy is if you want to view an enemy in this case. It's not me versus someone who has a different opinion than me. It's us, collectively, the reptile hobby as a whole, keepers and breeders against these extremist PETA and other animal rights activists that are trying to take away your american right to own a reptile they'll never go after they'll never be successful at going after cats and dogs and they know that but they have a little bit of leeway going after reptiles because reptiles is a niche market and the government doesn't realize right now how much money is spent in reptiles every single year there's billions with a b billions of dollars each year spent in the reptile market do you know why the government doesn't know that is because it's an unregulated market. The cat and the dog industry is more heavily regulated than the reptile industry, so therefore the government knows the value that cats and dogs bring to the American economy. That's in the trillions. Cats and dogs are in the trillions of dollars a year that are spent, or at least the tens of millions, right? Or the hundreds of millions, the cat and dog market. So the government's gonna look at the reptile market and be like, eh, how many people actually like reptiles? They don't know. So PETA is taking advantage of that and saying, hey, not that many people are into reptiles anyway. We might as well take, we might as well stop it right now before more people can get into it. So. And that is a really scary thought because our livelihood could be taken away. Your livelihood could be taken away. Or your joy as a hobby. Your joy, your yeah. passion. Um, you're, you know, our geckos, our reptiles are our friends. They're our companions. I don't know if Whitney knows this. I, actually, she does know this. It officially became official in Florida. Yeah. 
You can no longer own a tegu, a few different species of snakes, um, a few other species of lizards. And if you have them in your possession and you're caught, it is now criminal charges against you. Fines and criminal charges, and you could potentially be facing jail time because now you're hosting and harboring an illegal exotic animal. Um, that's coming for the rest of the United States, just so you know. What's happening in Florida right now, where they're banning specific reptiles and going after every reptile, that's going to happen across the rest of the United States. If So the reptile hobby... You know, all of these companies that are trying to bash each other within the reptile hum hobby. Oh, you keep reptiles this way. Oh, you keep reptiles that way. Oh, this is a, a crummy breeder because they breed lemon frost. All of these little bickerings and arguments in the reptile community is only giving the animal rights activists and PETA a larger ammunition, a larger gun to shoot ourselves with. So instead of us giving them ammunition... Why don't we just all humble ourselves, come together, agree that we all care about this hobby and not get too nitpicky over each other's ethical viewpoints and standards, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we're trying to think level-headed about this. Um, we're trying to you know, be considerate yet stand up for what we believe in. Um, I mean, maybe we should become more active in like anti PETA. Well, you can. So anyone who wants to be more active in anti PETA and anti animal rights activists that are coming after your, your rights as a reptile keeper, you can go to usark.com. Usark, U-S-A-R-K. That stands for United States Animal Rights Arc. Arc. I actually don't know what the K stands. Oh no, it's I think it's C. It's US Arc, A R C. Animal Rights Conservationalists or something like that, right? So if you type in Google US Arc, it might be A R K or it might be A R C, you'll find them. US Arc fights for our rights as reptile keepers. They're at every single show. If you go to any reptile show, Oh, it's with the K. Um, so thank you. So U.S. Ark, A-R-K. What does the K stand for? But um, they fight for our rights as reptile keepers at, uh, against the laws. They actually show up in court. They show up in front of the government officials and they present d defense points so that PETA and other animal rights organizations can't take away our rights to own reptiles. Because right now, they're trying to blatantly put... Oh, keepers, animal rights keepers, right? U U.S. Arc, animal rights keepers, I think. But they're trying to say, oh, keepers. keepers, because alligators and because cobras are getting out and potentially putting neighborhoods at risk, that's on the same level as a leopard gecko. That's on the same level as a ball python, and it's just not. There's a huge difference between an alligator and um, a leopard gecko. There's a gigantic difference between a spitting cobra and a ball python. And we'll but PETA doesn't care. They want to put all of that into the same category and ban all reptiles. Well, don't, I mean, I'm not defending them in any way, but don't they have like a grandfather clause? No, there won't be any grandfather so, clause. So like if you are already in possession one of one? You can keep it yeah. until the animal dies. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't breed it. You can't sell it. You can't. Um, yeah. And, and check this out. Right. This all started around Florida being overpopulated with tegus and pythons. And it's not even all of Florida. It's just the southern part, a few um, a few counties in the southern part of Florida. But here's what happened. It all started with overpopulation. And PETA and all these other animal rights activists, they're like, oh, the ecosystem of Florida is changing because of all these invasive species. So, um, oh, where was I going with that? I forgot. Uh, invasive being key. I don't remember where I was going with that. But it all started around invasiveness. What species can be considered invasive? Um, and they started going after those species. But now, they're going after 
almost any species you can come up with. Leopard geckos, bearded dragons, crested geckos, they're slowly but surely working their way in to take away our rights as reptile keepers to have any of those animals that were just listed. Um, so Christy, I don't, I don't know who they is. She says, yeah, but if they never do, how are they going to save wildlife without breeders or keepers of yeah. wildlife? That I, I remember where I was going with that point. I Sometimes I get on rants and I forget where I was going. I try really hard not to. But here's where I was going with that. They say it's for the ecosystem, the benefit of the ecosystem. Oh, you can't, you can't breed, you can't keep or sell tegus anymore for the benefit of the ecosystem. I don't know if you guys know this, but there were people in Florida making a living catching wild tegus and then shipping them out of Florida. You can't even do that now. That's illegal. You cannot touch or catch a wild tegu, keep it in your possession, and then sell it outside the state of Florida. If PETA's true goal for um, um, limiting the wild population of reptiles in the ecosystem, if that was their true goal, they would be okay with trappers and keepers catching wild reptiles and shipping them out of Florida. Without people catching wild reptiles, how much more is the tegu population going to increase? How much more is the Burmese python population going to increase? How much more is the alligator population going to increase? Well, they don't care about the alligators. They view those as native, right? Even though they don't even have proof of that necessarily. But um, anyway, you get my point. If, if Florida cannot send reptiles out of Florida, you can't even touch them. It's illegal to catch and keep a tegu in the state of Florida. So if you can't even catch them and ship them out of state and you just have to leave them alone, they're just going to multiply even more than if you were allowed to at least catch them and ship them out of the state of Florida like some people were doing for a living. Um, so yeah, yeah, it just doesn't I... make sense. Their goal is not... They don't care about the ecosystem. They know that that's a lost cause over there. Their goal is just to simply take away all rights for reptiles because then they don't have to worry about anything. In their minds, they don't have to worry about any reptiles escaping if nobody can keep reptiles. And that includes all species of reptiles that could survive in America, which is crested geckos, leopard geckos. Any, almost anything can thrive and survive given the chance. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't... No, but that... I don't think every... No, not a lot a of them will thrive and survive, but I mean... Well, Apex Gecko says every species was an invasive one at some point. Um, yeah, that's possibly true. Um, I don't know, I guess it goes back to evolution. Um... Apex is saying every species was an invasive one at some point. Yeah, that's a great point that I always stick by is... Well, is that entirely true, though? Well, the American... Con if you believe in Pangaea, which was one continent, right? That means all animals were alive on one continent at some point, And then the continent split up. Well, little by little, um, animals got transported by humans... Or they swam from island to island or continent to continent, like certain reptiles or whatever, and you know became invasive into um, into a foreign territory. So I think to some point, not all, but I think a lot of species become invasive to some point. Like for example, down in Florida, this is just an example. Boar, pigs, boars. I, I believe I'm no history expert. You're, you're more of an expert than me. But what did the pilgrims bring to America that the natives didn't have? Wasn't it like boar and like turkey or something and like all kinds of other stuff that they didn't have here? I think turkey was already here. But no, in all honesty, maybe some of you guys know in the chat, 
there's a whole bunch of other invasive species in Florida. Um, there you go, pigs. Pigs are not native to America. We brought those over from Europe. They're not. Certain species of cats, certain species of dogs, all of that. I mean, think of, okay, yeah, this, is so. the, this is the easiest thing to think of because every town has this. Invasive cats, wild cats. Invasive cats. Yeah, the cats that we have in America, those cats weren't here. But here's why PETA can't go after the cat industry. It's too big of an industry for them to fight. There's too many Americans that love cats and dogs. Could you imagine if PETA came on the news and said, hey, we're trying to take all your cats and dogs and make them illegal for you to keep. Could you imagine the uproar? First of all, all the senators and all the government people that pass those bills that PETA is proposing, they all have cats and dogs or they have children that have cats and dogs. But reptiles are a little bit more taboo in in our hobby not as many people know how cool and how easy reptiles are to keep and so PETA's going after the reptile industry right now because frankly they lost the fight in the dog and the cat industry they know that's an uphill battle that they're going to lose so they're going after the group of animals that they feel like they can uh secure a deal with which is reptiles so mm -hmm. um i mean yeah what what derek nelson says is true you know part of the reason why PETA is doing this is because people get big snakes or big lizards and they either don't take care of them or like they let them go or they get loose so i mean the sins of people are being you know blamed by punished by the lack of care of those people. Um. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely a need for some kind of regulation, right? If you guys have been keeping track of reptile news, there was recently one or two dangerous, venomous cobras that escaped somebody's collection, got out into the public, and people are currently chasing them right now. There's definitely a need for some kind of regulation especially as animals get more risky large snakes falls into that category risky but um to go after leopard geckos in the same way you're going after spitting cobras is what PETA is doing they're trying to ban leopard geckos bearded dragons tag ball pythons they're trying to put all of that into the same category as reticulated pythons, venomous animals, crocodiles, etc. So I believe this more dangerous category does need to be more heavily regulated. It shouldn't be that easy to get a venomous animal. In the same way, it shouldn't be that easy to purchase a firearm. It's the same concept in my mind. Um, in the same way, it shouldn't be that easy to get a driver's license. You know? Um, a car is a weapon. If you're irresponsible behind the wheel of the car, it costs and it can cost other people's lives. That's very serious, right? So can a venomous reptile and a large reptile. That could cost you your baby's life. If a cobra gets out and attacks your baby in your house or somebody else's house, you know, or a large snake attacks you while you're handling it and you're by yourself. So there's definitely a need for regulation for dangerous animals. But leopard geckos, crested geckos, tag use ball pythons, stuff that is under four or five feet that is not a danger level, they're trying to put that into the same category as venomous animals. And, and that's, that's what we're facing as a hobby. So the more we bicker against each other, the more we fight uh, and disagree and put that out there publicly, the more that PETA and these other animal uh, organizations are going to use that as ammunition to show that we don't know what we're doing in the reptile hobby. Look, subject A can't agree with subject B, and subject C is siding with subject A, and they're fighting it out with each other. That's only giving PETA more ammunition to, to take all of our rights, not just A or company A or company B or keeper A or keeper C, everybody's rights. Yeah, Brenda, it is a shame that everyone is painted with the same brush 
Um, you know, we have a cat, Ray Storick, and... <laughs> well, hide her. No, that, that is true. He said cats have contributed to the extinction of about 63 species of birds. <laughs> there you go. And what about fish? Do you know how many invasive fish are in our ponds and in our oceans? Okay, there was a Shark Tank episode about the lionfish. I don't know if you guys saw that episode. The lionfish is obviously a pet fish. It came into the pet industry, was released into the oceans in Florida, and now it's but killing... It's dangerous. It's ki no, it's killing all the wildlife around the reefs. So they went on to Shark Tank, and their whole pitch was, let's eat the lionfish. If we eat the lionfish and make that a marketable desirable fish to eat there will be less of them in the wild and it will control the population a little bit more that's at least a little bit more reasonable than PETA that's like okay we don't want tegus to live in Florida so here's our solution nobody could touch a tegu in Florida and ship it out of the state what how does does that can you just repeat that back to me real quick you don't want tegus in Florida so your your solution for that is to stop people from collecting them and shipping them out of the state of Florida to make it illegal to do so? Explain to me how this is going to control the population, please. What is PETA going to do with those reptiles in the first place? Oh, kill them. I mean, you... What? Okay, to be honest, I hate to see reptiles dying, and I hate this part of the show, but Whitney and I love the show Guardians of the Glades, right? What do they what do with those snakes? Love so, they you they don't you don't see what they do with those snakes, but they put them in containers where they die from heat exhaustion while they're on the back of the trucks, or they whatever kill them with a big rock, cut their head off after they've been you know um, la la laid out. Um, Florida has a kill policy. You could kill an iguana on site. You can kill a tegu on site. You can kill a Burmese python on site. Um, Certain YouTubers have gotten super, super popular. They have millions and millions of followers because they torture reptiles. They go out into the wild, they torture them, they kill them for views. And that's, that's, the, that's what the industry is coming to if PETA has their way. That's what PETA would prefer. PETA would prefer... You going out there and killing all these animals instead of you going out there trying to rehome these animals. That's just what PETA is in support of. I I know he's very passionate, guys. Um, he probably knows more about PETA than me. Um, I like to stick to facts. Um, and... Um, I mean, so these are if, all facts. If there is, well, if there is something that's ever not true, just feel free to just be like, hey, that's not true. Because, you know, we want to write on the side of credibility. Um, What's well, these are YouTubers. These are, um, this is a show called Guardians of the Glades. And they're, um... A bunch of people in Florida that are like professional snake hunters. They're going to become professional tegu hunters soon too. Um. So. Yeah. Um. So Ray Storick, whatever he or I said wasn't true, you can. Feel free to point that out. Um, yeah, messages to us. We'll talk about it. Really? Yeah, or just put it in the chat. I know I get carried away. I know I don't always have my facts, but everything that I say in general is coming from something I've heard or something that is absolutely factual, you know? So um, I don't know what you might be referring to, but bring it up in the chat and, and we will talk about it. Um... Derek Nelson says, did you ever decide on the urban reptile? Still going to send you some good pics of mine this week. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're probably not going to purchase from the urban reptile anytime soon. It seems like most of 
the people that I talk to, uh, most of those people say that it's only the tangerines that they get that are more colorful online. And the same goes with crested geckos. If you got a crested gecko from them that's super, super colorful online, there's a good chance that it's not as colorful in person. So I've seen more of those reviews compared to, uh, oh, and, and also tangerine reviews compared to like getting a snow, right? A snow is a white gecko. A black knight is a black gecko. It's hard to mess up blacks and whites. But if you get orange geckos, most of the comments that I've been seeing is that their pictures are more saturated for the orange colors than they are in person. I'll put that to the test. Eventually, I'll spend a couple thousand dollars with under the, the urban gecko. I'll spend a couple thousand dollars with him or maybe 500 to 1,000 and put that to the test. But um, I'm pretty sure all the people that are talking to me about having the issues with tangerine geckos, I'm pretty sure that's true and I'll tell you why. When I take a picture of a tangerine ge gecko, depending on the way the camera picks up the lighting, sometimes it's going to make the gecko look better or worse than what the gecko actually looks like in person. And there are a lot of Instagrammers that post pictures of geckos and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, you know what? I bet you this gecko does not look like this in person. They're just taking advantage of the lighting and the camera angle, right? A lot of them probably do look like that in person and those are rare exceptions. But there's a lot of pictures that don't look as good in person as the gecko does on camera. Um, the, the reason I say that is because uh, your camera has auto editing functions inside of it. It also has different light saturations that get picked up depending upon the lighting in your room, the lighting outside. And so when you snap a picture of an animal, that might not be the exact way the animal looks in real life. So whenever I post a picture online, I try to actually make it so that the animal looks better in person than in the picture. So I will actually purposely make the picture look the same or slightly worse than the animal looks in person. Because I would rather you buy from us and then be like, wow, this animal looks really good when you get it in person, instead of show you an amazing picture that the camera kind of edited a little bit and then um, you get it in person and you're like, Wow, this doesn't this this is not what I paid two, three, four hundred dollars for, you know? Um so what do we got? What's up, Junior? Good to see you, my man. Um, Junior's stopping by the facility again in a couple of weeks for I guess it's no longer a surprise. He was going to surprise his girlfriend or fiance, I think. I'm not sure. I might have just helped you out there a little bit, if not fiance yet. But, uh, yeah, he's going to surprise his girlfriend anyway with a couple of geckos. So we're going to see them again. Shane said, is there truth about wild Asian geckos being traded for the cosmetics industry? I wouldn't doubt it. You know the cosmetic industry uses whale blubber and all kinds of stuff. I mean, think about this for a second. Right now there's poachers in Africa killing rhinoceroses for and elephants for their horns and their tusks because they believe that it's uh, some kind of it gives some kind of medicinal gain, right? Or some kind of gain to human beings. So, and same thing with the sharks. How many sharks get their fins cut off each year because Certain populations of the world believe that it is a medicinal purpose, right? Um, now, it might be a medicinal purpose. I don't know. I don't know where the science lies in that. But the bottom of the bottom line is, yes, there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past the cosmetic industry to try to use an animal for gain, especially an animal with as silky smooth skin as the leopard gecko. I could absolutely, or leopard gecko or crested gecko, I could absolutely see them um, doing that. Uh, 
You know, you can save your voice. You don't have to talk so loud. I know, I can't help it. If they can hear me, they can hear you. I can't help it. It's the way I'm built. Well, I I got a degree in choral education, and I know that talking this loud for this long is going to be damaging on your voice. Not I mean, you ocean. Don't, right? You don't need a, a degree to know that. Not but, the coral of the ocean, right? <sighs> coral reef. Oh, the gecko made a getaway. Y'all gotta tell Whitney when a gecko makes a getaway now, you hear? Yeah, but I don't know how not to yell. Like, when I just talk, or at least when I'm, like, passionate about when something, it just... When talk to me... Oh, yeah, guys. When he when he's talking to me, or... Oh, yeah, they, they told me that it jumped, but I just didn't see it in time. Mm. Thank you. Um... When he's talking to me about something he's passionate about, or when we're, like, arguing, oh, man, his voice goes up, like, so, it gets so loud. Yeah. Brenda says you get super excited. I just get excited. I can't help it. Even in person, when we do shows... The person's right there in front of me. If we're at a show, I just... It's probably because the, the atmosphere is so loud that I feel like I have to talk loud, even though maybe I don't. But in this case, you guys are behind camera, so I feel like I have to raise my voice for you to hear me. No, you don't, because but, you're, like, right in front of no, the phone. No, I know, but that's what I mean is I feel like it. In my psyche, in my head, I feel like the only way they're going to hear me is if I... I speak loudly and speak clearly. So that's why my body reacts by talking loudly. Okay. Everyone, give a thumbs up if you can hear Frank loud and clear. Okay, what if you can hear me right now when I'm talking like this at this volume level? Would you rather me talk at this volume level compared to this volume level where you can hear me? But your wife is sitting right next to you. I got earplugs. Just kidding. <laughs> Do we get any? Do we got any reptile questions or gecko uh, questions? Well, Matthew really wants you to check out suburban gecko. I know suburban gecko. They have great animals. I'll be a hundred percent honest. I've never bought from suburban gecko, but a lot of his pictures are really dark. Whenever you take a picture in the dark, it makes the animal look higher contrasted. So, again. I don't have any problem with people taking pictures and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, yeah, they're saying you're talking a little loud. <laughs> anyway, I love Chris from Suburban Gecko, you know. Um, he's a good guy. I support him. I've actually tried to get him on a live stream, but I've never bought a gecko from him. That's just what I've seen is that... His pictures are dark, and when you take a dark picture, it increases the color of the gecko naturally. Oh, look, I'm, I'm already talking a little bit lower yeah, now. Yeah, you feels are. Good. good for you. Yeah, you guys scared me now. You see that? Voice therapy. You scared me. Well, you don't want to get nodes. Nodes? Mm -hmm. What is that? Nodules. Nodules? What is that? Nodules in your vocal fold. That sounds like a joke. What you got? Nodules? Collops. Nodules? Collops? Pimples. Pimples in my throat? Yep. How is that even possible? That's what um, polyps are. I don't even know what a polyp is. It's a pimple in your throat. Okay. Is, uh, that, like a, is that like a street term? Where did you get this no, from? No, a polyp is an actual medical term. Gosh. Is that PETA? Is that used by PETA? <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, I need to go grab some pizza. Oh, no. Say goodbye to Whitney, guys. I'm coming back. She's going to get food. She's gone. We lost coming her. Back. Can you grab me some soda, please? I wish you guys were here. Um, we purchased soda for the first day of 
Soda. We purchased pizza and soda for the first day of our employee working with us, and now we have extra pizza. So if you were here, we would have extra pizza for you. But if any of you guys are ever in the Arizona area and interested in a job or volunteering, we are going to be looking more seriously into employees and volunteers over the next six months because as we grow, we're going to need a little bit of help to support the level of growth that we're looking to expand. So get in contact with me. Let me know. Brooks, too busy for us, guys. I'm sorry. No, in reality, she's doing really, really good. She's got a manager position now at PetSmart. She does great there. She's a very hard worker for them, as she's always been a hard worker for us. And I just really encouraged her that they give her a lot of things that we can't give her. They give her a lot of hours, a, a really decent pay. They give her um, benefits. You know, so... There's a lot of benefits to working for uh, um, a larger corporation. When you work for a larger corporation, they can give you a lot of things that a small business can't. Most small businesses don't have health benefits and all that kind of stuff. So that's something to consider. We can pay you a little bit more. For example, I, I might be able to pay you a little bit more than a big corporate, you know, McDonald's can. But McDonald's is going to give you more hours and they're going to give you benefits, you know. So that's stuff that I can't give you as a small business. <laughs> if you work more than 40 hours or 30 hours, you have to get benefits. I don't know what the exact rule is. But when you work for a corporation or organization, you at least get um, opportunity for benefits. And... You also get opportunity for climbing the corporate ladder, right? Like you can only climb. Thank you, hon. You can only climb so high in Geeky Gecko Creations, right? I mean, as we expand, you know, the further managerial oper um, positions might open up. But for the most part, it's just kind of cleaning and grunt work. Grunt? Grunt work kind of stuff. Yeah, you know. So even if you're getting paid... $14 an hour, 15 whatever, more as time goes on. Even if you're getting paid $14, $15 an hour to clean gecko poo, that's a lot. That sounds great. But uh, a gecko company is not going to be able to offer you benefits, you know what I mean, like these corporations are. So working for a small business is better when you are in high school or college and you just want to make money, but this isn't what you, this isn't your career path, right? That's sort of like the, the type of person that we need, so. So Brenda says, could you explain, oh wait, let me back up. Now how can you back up if you're sitting down? Now you get it? Can you get the dad, that? The dad jokes are relentless. Some I'm of them, a reptile dad. Some of them aren't even dad jokes. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Thanks. F E. Oh, awesome. Junior Gecko says, count me in when I'm down there per minute. I'll help you out on free time. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, and that's another thing, too, is I would prefer not to just not to hire somebody that doesn't know anything about reptiles or somebody that isn't willing to listen, right? Like it's tough to find good help. So um, thank you so much, Nate, for that one, $1.99 or $2 contribution. That is awesome. And he said, you're a great guy in the hobby, Frank. Well, thank you. Um, awesome, Robbie. Roby. Oh, hon, I forgot. So if someone donates money like that, yeah. make sure we call them out. Like, um, I always do. And, and make sure we mention what they commented. You I know. always do. Oh, okay. Robbie got some tangerines from JMG Reptiles and Kensington Geckos. They're nice tangs. <laughs> yeah, J uh, J oh, so if you want to know more about JMG Reptile, go to Palmetto State Geckos YouTube page. 
If you're looking for about three hours worth of live stream content from JMG Reptile and Echo Geckos, one of the top people in the game for Black Night Morphs, Palmetto State Geckos has interviews with both of these guys, like three to four hours total. It's really, really great stuff to listen to while you're in the car, while you're just doing chores, whatever the case may be. So JMG Reptile, he's been in the hobby for a long time. He kind of started with, um, uh, what are they called? Um, Hognose snakes and leopard geckos is kind of the most that he's known for. He's even spoken about it. He kind of does more hognose stuff than leopard gecko stuff nowadays. But um, he's getting more and more back in, into the leopard gecko side of things. Y'all are awesome. We love you guys. And, you know, lizards, lizard Caesars, little Caesars what? isn't bad. You know what? It'll do the job. It was $15 for two pizzas and a two liter. I don't know if they overcharged me or what I got. It was just two pepperoni pizzas. So I've gotten more pricey. That makes sense. Everything's more pricey right now. With, mm -hmm. By the way, guys, if you're buying or expecting a reptile right now, I would not have it shipped. If your breeder does not know about what's going on, Right now with the hurricane down in Louisiana, that's going to back everything up for FedEx. And FedEx has already been delayed a ton this year. So put the hurricane on top of that and you're talking about, you're definitely talking about a, a remedy for disaster of dead animals and late packages. So if you're, if you're buying an animal right now and your breeder doesn't say anything, you better ask them, hey, are you aware of this hurricane? Because... It's being recommended right now to all breeders not to ship reptiles, at least for this week. And if FedEx is backed up this week because of the tornado, there's a good chance they're going to be backed up next week. So it might be two to three weeks before it's safe to ship reptiles again. So... Did you say tornado? Uh, hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I might have said tornado. Hurricana. Bryson says, since Osteo SA is unavailable everywhere, what's a good second best to combine with Bionate? You know what Osteoform SA is? It's calcium. I know what Osteo means. This is what we use. Uh, Repti Calcium with D3. And then you can still buy this off Amazon. It's Vionate for pets, vitamins, a one-to-one -one ratio. One scoop. One scoop. And you mix them together in a powder form like this. Mix, mix, mix it up really good. And that's what we've been using instead of osteoform now. You know what osteoform was? I didn't know that. I took anatomy. You know what osteoform is? Is that something to do with anatomy? Osteo means bone. Osteo? Osteo. Oh, I didn't know that. You have calcium in your bones. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's probably why the formula is called that. Because mm -hmm. it's calcium. See, two heads are better than one. Beautiful peachy, peachy gecko here. Very creamy. Orangey, peachy. Very pretty. Yeah, very pretty. I like this. We're definitely keeping this one. Makes me hungry for um, like a berry sorbet. Like a dreamsicle, yeah. Or something. Uh, yeah. This is a really nice example of the pinstripe, bold stripe line that we're going for. These very thin 
double stripe lines like that. This one is not that connected. Like you can see it's a little bit disconnected. It's just like dots. But as soon as I put this to a male that has thin stripes, oh, you're gonna see those stripes come out really, really clean and really, really nice. These guys like to poop in their humid hide. The benefit of that is I could just dump it. The not benefit of that is that I have to use a uh, new eco earth every time. <laughs> So really no benefit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You are correct. Really no benefit. I might need you to give me a bite of pizza. Um, sorry, Brenda, I thought your question was answered. Um, so. Oh, my phone's dying. Let me grab the charger real quick. You got the white thing there? White thing? The extension cord? Yeah. Can you get it? Can you put it on this side? I don't see the phone charger. I love leopard geckos, guys. I mean... I've gone back and forth whether I want to focus on crested geckos or gargoyle geckos or even lychees. At the end of the day, when I come in here, this is home. But I don't see the phone charger. I'm going to grab the charger. Or actually, can you grab it? It's on the wall in the bedroom. At the, at the end of the day, this is my favorite species. If somebody put a quote-unquote blank to my head and said, hey, you have to choose one species to work with, it would absolutely be leopard geckos. Even as much as I like tegus and ball pythons, leopard geckos would be the species I would choose, even though they are not the most profitable species. So if anyone's breeding reptiles, um, the number one selling reptile in the world is ball python. Um, number two behind that is probably leopard geckos and bearded dragons. Um, so, and then number three is like crested geckos and gargoyle geckos. That's besides like corn snakes and stuff. I don't really know enough about corn snakes to give input on how well they sell. But I always see they're really popular in the hobby. Easy, girl. Easy. I'm trying. Gosh. Whitney sometimes. She says, I don't know how loud I speak. She doesn't know how rough she is with technology. Like <laughs> electronics break. Like you can't just... You can't just smash something I'm into something I else. I was trying to be as careful as I could. I know, but even that was looking pretty. That was looking rougher than I sound. <laughs> um, did you answer Brenda's question? Mm, what was it again? Um, could you explain a little about, um, like pet geckos and what pet only means? Oh yes, <laughs> send me on another rant, Brenda. Send me on another rant. I almost hate the term pet gecko. It is the worst term in the industry that I think we can use. And here's why. There's no validity to calling something a pet animal. Oh my gosh. I, where do I start? Where do I start with this? Oh Jesus. Oh Lord help me. Effie's meowing. Why is she meowing? I don't know. She has food. Okay, let me very calmly, look, I'm talking calm. I'm talking calm, right? This is good, right? Let me very calmly explain where the term pet gecko came from and why I disagree with it. The term pet gecko derives from a group, not the industry, a group of people in the leopard gecko hobby specifically that believe that Unless you know exactly the genetics that are in your gecko, you should call it a pet-only gecko and never breed that animal. They're loosening the reins a little bit now, and they're saying, oh, you can breed the animal, just sell the babies as pet-only, okay? Oh, man. I rarely hate stuff, but this is something that I really just dislike for a couple of reasons. Number one, you never know what's truly in your animal. The people that are making these comments, they forget 
that mutations can spontaneously occur. Mutations can environmentally occur based on the environment. And 99% of the animals in the reptile hobby have unknown genetics. You don't know exactly what's in your gecko. So does that mean we should sell every animal as pet only? And this is where they get caught in their hypocrisy is they have the mentality that, well, as long as you think or it comes from a reputable breeder that it has these genetics in it, you don't have to call it a pet only. No matter what breeder you get from, the top of the top breeders, geckos, etc., suburban geckos, gecko boa, all of those guys are selling geckos with unknown genetics. They don't fully know every single possibility of what could potentially be going on inside of their geckos for a couple of reasons. Number one, they did not prove out that lineage of gecko. Number two, they don't know if a spontaneous mutation occurred or can occur after they sell that gecko. So to call something a pet only gecko, what they're saying is, here's a gecko. I don't completely know the genetics of this gecko or it has crossed genetics in it. Let me talk on this point for a little bit. This is the second category of pet only geckos. So. Category number one, unknown genetics. They think you should call that a pet-only gecko and you shouldn't tell anybody the potential genetics that are in that animal and that animal should never be bred again. Think about that for a second. If you have an animal that has unknown genetics, you should never breed that animal again. My argument against this mentality is when the hobby first started, all genetics were unknown. And in the hobby right now, 99% of the geckos that we have, you can't 100% say that you know what is or isn't inside of that gecko. And you cannot 100% say that a spontaneous mutation will not occur. That's how we got all of these mutations. Albinism, white and yellow, snow, albino, all of these mutations occurred spontaneously inside of the leopard gecko species. So why could it not occur again? If gecko boa, the number one most reputable breeder in the world for leopard geckos, if he sells you a het free animal, that animal is 100% subjected to spontaneous mutation. It's rare, but possible. So, the pet-only term is supposed to refer to geckos that have unknown genetics. I think I've supported my point of why I believe it's a silly case because of spontaneous mutation and also because of 90% of the geckos in the hobby currently have unknown genetics. Point number two, mixing albino lines, mixing eclipse eye lines, or mixing geckos that have known health issues. Enigma, lemon frost, eclipse, NDBE, um, blue amber eyes, marble eyes. All of these traits are considered either health issues or when mixed with each other are considered unethical by bigger breeders because now you don't know the genetics in the gecko. If you take a bell albino gecko and you breed it to a tremper albino gecko, the babies are going to be 100% het bell and het tremper, but you won't know which babies are het bell and which babies are het tremper. And they deem that as a pet gecko because they think these geckos are now unworthy. I'm screaming again. I'm screaming. They think now these geckos are unworthy of breeding in the hobby. Um, here is my main issue with calling something a pet gecko. 
I'm going to say this really calmly and not scream. 99% of the people that you sell a pet gecko to are going to breed that animal anyway. And if you give them no clue to the genetics that is in that animal, you are actually doing worse for the hobby than if you told that person what genetics might be in that animal. Let me give you an example. If Gecko Boa, the number one breeder in the hobby, sells you a pet only gecko and he doesn't give you any genetic information on that animal, there is a 90% chance that whoever buys that gecko is going to breed it with other geckos. And now all of these genetics are unknown because Gecko Boa never shared with you the potential genetics that are in that gecko. If you buy a gecko from us, I really hate labeling it pet only. If I do label it pet only, it's only to try to appease the industry standard of what's going on. But recently, I've stopped naming stuff, stuff pet only. I, I might not use that terminology anymore. Um, my approach in the past has always been, just tell people what you think is in their gecko. If you bred a bell albino gecko to a tremper albino gecko, just sell those babies as a normal gecko, 50% or possible pet tremper, possi ingredients possible pet bell. Just sell that gecko with the potential for what it might be. Just tell people what it might be. Don't go through all this cons conspicuousness, mystery, secrecy, trying to protect the purity of this animal when you know the person's going to breed that animal anyway. I think I've exhausted the support of defining why I believe this is actually worse for the hobby to name animals pet only geckos under these circumstances. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let's move on to the next question. I think well, I spoke on that topic. I mean, Derek, yeah, I completely agree. You see it all the time. Even in the registered dog world, people forge papers. So many people get dogs that are not their, what they're fully stated. Yes, so, people can lie. Yeah. And again, my, my most major point is that in the hobby, 90% of the geckos already have unknown genetics. But you don't see 90% of them being called pet-only geckos. You only see a 1%, a very, very small fraction. That comes from bigger breeders that want to push their agenda on the rest of the hobby. And that is something I'm very loud and outspoken against, is when bigger breeders want to push their agenda on the rest of the hobby as if it's the Bible as if it is God's doctrine himself as far as the way that leopard geckos should be bred. I will have a, a calm conversation and debate with any breeder that wants to talk about this topic with me, but guess what? They're not going to. You know why? It hurts their reputation. If they come on our show and they start talking about controversial topics, they think it's going to hurt their sales. What they don't realize is it's actually going to help their sales. How many times have I recommended Gecko Boa, Suburban Gecko, um, even Bubba's Geckos, uh, Huff's Herps, all of these companies that have had negative interaction with us at some point in the past? I don't know about Gecko Boa, but the other ones have had negative interaction with us in the past. I'll, I'll still recommend them because I, I will set aside my personal dispute or my personal disagreement that I have with another person, I will set that aside in light of the good things that that company is doing. Bubba's Geckos, Huff's Herps, Suburban Geckos, Z, uh, Xenomorphs, all of those companies have expressed severe um, disagreement 
with us, Geeky Gecko Creations. But I want to support those companies. I want to collaborate with those people. I want to unite. I want to conversate. Converse. Converse. They don't want to do any of that. The reason being is they believe it's just going to hurt their reputation. That is a that type of mentality. There might be other reasons, but that type of mentality, the type of mentality that someone doesn't want to talk about controversial stuff because they feel like it's going to hurt their image is false, number one, but also holds back the hobby, number two, which is why it is our goal, and Whitney knows, it's our goal at Geeky Gecko Creations to be 100% transparent and honest. Why don't you see other big breeders showing their operation like we're showing? Why don't you see other big breeders showing you the way that their tubs look? The cleanliness of their animals. Why are they not showing behind the scenes activity? Maybe it's because they got something to hide. Maybe it's because they feel like uh, they don't have the time. Maybe it's because they don't want to put in the time. Maybe it's because they're content where their business is. Or maybe it's because they feel like it's going to hurt their business. Whatever the reason is, it does not help the hobby grow when the largest names in the hobby are mysterious, conspicuous, is that a word? I'm not going to say that that's why they're not going to, why they don't show, you know, all their racks and everything. It could just be that they're just not as social media. Why? That's what I said. They don't and have time. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, it doesn't mean they always have something to hide. No, that's okay. But let me, let me say something to that point. None of the big breeders do. Let me say that again. If a couple of the big breeders don't show behind the scenes, that's understandable. Social media is not for everybody. But if none of the big breeders show behind the scenes, that's either a lack to adapt, right? They don't want to adapt to YouTube. They don't want to adapt to Instagram. They don't want to adapt to videos. And in doing that, they have every right as a business owner to say they don't want to do that. My only point is that it's not helping the hobby grow. It's only holding the hobby back, which is why Luna Geckos, Gekopia, Geeky Gecko Creations, these are the top three companies right now that are actually producing fresh content on YouTube around leopard geckos every single day, every single week. Why are none of the biggest breeders in the world doing that, right? So they have every right not to. They have every right not to. All I'm saying is it only holds the hobby back when you are more concealing and mysterious. You don't collaborate with others. You go at it solo. It only holds the hobby back. So sorry, hon. You can comment I'm, on that. I'm, I just want to I'm understand. not going to... Okay, I'm not as passionate... <laughs> um... I'm not as passionate about Frank. Um, everyone has their own style of doing business. Maybe it's to my advantage that I don't know all of these companies as well. Um, my husband and I disagree all the time. Um, I have a different viewpoint than he does. Um, I don't want to take this time to... <laughs> to like bash on other people and you know bash their social media sharing um i just want to make that a disclaimer we are just talking about growth here right mm -hmm. and we're talking about looking behind the scenes at somebody's collection let me ask you guys who are in the chat do you appreciate that we are willing to show you everything behind the scenes you could see exactly how we do things you could ask any questions you want you could do that with the bigger breeders, but they're not really going to show you behind the scenes. They might have one picture, but they're not going to show you everything. They might have no time to answer your questions because all they're doing is processing sales. And that's okay. But again, it just doesn't help the hobby grow. That, I'm talking about helping the hobby grow. Many of you guys don't know this. Leopard geckos was the number one selling animal alongside ball pythons 15 years ago 
And then the leopard gecko market tanked hugely over the last 15 years. One of the reasons for that is lack of transparency, lack of promotion, and all of these little arguments and um, personal beefs between companies and between perspectives started to outbreak. And then when new people stepped into the hobby, they just got caught up in, oh, you're either on our side or we're going to kick you out. You're either on our side or we're going to kick you out. And that's what I mean is that the, the secrecy mentality has held back the leopard gecko hobby for so long. But by golly, we are not going to stand for it anymore, folks. We're going to show you everything. We're going to make videos. We're going to talk geckos. And although me saying this might frustrate these bigger breeders, if they'll humble themselves and admit that there's some kind of truth to what I'm saying, there's so much more business that would come to them. And so many more people that would enter into the hobby if only we set aside our differences and promoted the hobby in general instead of promoting only one breeder or another. And that's something that happens right now is bigger, certain breeders are like, oh, you should only go to me, this guy, or this guy. Anybody else you should not buy from. That is the wrong way to grow a hobby. It just does not make your audience grow when you restrict the amount of people that are coming into the hobby by, by being a dictator to them, by telling them that, hey, either you have to view things my way or you're wrong. You have to do things my way or you're wrong. And that's a huge part of the way the hobby is run right now as far as leopard geckos are concerned. So we're making a change, by golly. I'm proud of that. I'll, I'll, I've been honest with you guys, right? I'm just representing what I've seen in the leopard gecko hobby over the last five years since I have more heavily gotten in compared to where the leopard gecko hobby was in the glory days. There was a glory days of the leopard gecko hobby, and it's coming back. It is, guys. We're seeing sales increasing, shows are increasing, interest is increasing, all because information is increasing collaboration is increasing and content is increasing and that's where i'll be honest that's where i feel like a lot of the biggest breeders currently dropped the ball they stopped collaborating they stopped promoting they stopped making content on a level that would attract newcomers and they started making controversy Instead of making content, they made controversy and therefore drove people away from the hobby instead of welcoming people in. Okay? That that's that's my that's why I say it as passionate as I do, Hunter, is for that purpose. Well, yeah, w Wally, you were super awesome. Um Thanks for sharing all your content and, you know, all your thoughts and opinions as well. Oh, you got to tell me when Wally has you a thought. I need to know that. I am. You didn't? I didn't hear from Wally today. He just said, well, he says, you know, he shows his breeders, even though he's not a big breeder. He still, you know, he still shows his um, content and everything. Yeah, I'm not accusing Wally. Wally of Supreme Geckos does not fall into the category that I'm talking about because Wally creates content. Wally opens himself up to people that he has um, dis disagreements with, right? Like me and Wally, we don't see eye to eye on everything. You know, like he's been honest with me and told me, hey, I think this, this, and this. And I've told him, hey, I think this, this, and this. But we love each other. We support each other. We promote each other. And that's what I'm saying is missing in the leopard gecko hobby. Wally is a leopard gecko breeder, don't get me wrong, but there are people in the leopard gecko hobby right now that only focus on leopard geckos, and it's so difficult to have a conversation, collaborate, get content from that person, because they, they just have a completely different agenda or priority list. And that's okay if it's only a couple of people, but for the whole hobby to be that way, and again, I'm being a little bit dramatic, 
But in general, let me let me put this to you guys. You guys are the audience. You judge. How many leopard gecko companies out there show you exactly like we show you behind the scenes, day in and day out, weekly live streams, producing content? If you can name one or a couple, please name them, and I will give them credit for that. But what I'm saying is there's more that don't than there should be. There's more that don't than there should be. There should be a much higher amount of larger leopard gecko breeders that are showing content and, and, and making more content on the relevant platforms. What is a relevant platform? How many of you go on Facebook? How many of you have children who use Facebook? How many of you have grandchildren that use Facebook? The reason I ask those questions is because Facebook will always be around. Don't get me wrong. But as of right now, Facebook is less than Instagram and less than YouTube and Google, right? So the breeders that are stuck on Facebook because they've been in the industry for 30 years, if they don't move to Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Google, if they don't move to those platforms, they're just going to stay stagnant. They're not going to promote the hobby and their their own business is just going to slowly grow instead of more massively growing. So that's my point. That's not Wally. Wally's an OG. If you don't know what OG stands for, that means original gangster. It gives credit to all the older people in the hobby. Okay? It doesn't stand for old gangster. OG stands for original gangster because they just have that reputation that carries them. Wally is an OG that has adapted into the millennial market. What is the millennial market? Social media. What is top social media right now? Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. I think Wally's on TikTok. Wally's, Wally's everywhere. His, his granddaughter was on here the other night recommending songs. It was so funny. She was recommending like Taylor Swift songs and songs that like savage love and like Wally didn't know the songs, but it was just funny. <laughs> Um, this is my thoughts, guys. I've always been a truth seeker with, you know, religion and health and politics and all that stuff. Um, if we ever present any information that is not accurate, I mean, I see a lot of love here. I see a lot of agreeing. I see a lot of support. That's awesome, guys. But if we ever present information that is not accurate please let us know because when when it comes down to it it's about the animals you know um thank you hun. it's not about the politics it's about the animals the yin to my yang <laughs> but the only way that people learn about animals is by making content and putting information out there. So that's why I stress content so much. Think about this for a second. How many questions have you asked? Okay, this is a bad example because I've been ranting for a lot of this live stream. But how many live streams have you been a part of or videos that we've made at Geeky Gecko Creations that have answered your questions? What if that content was not out there? It will be so much more difficult for you to find the answers get involved with the hobby that you might even wind up leaving, right? Or there's just so much information out there that you're not going to come in contact with because it's not relevant or it's not, you know, updated. And that's one of my biggest points is that we need up-to-date information. This is 2021, people. Let's not be stuck in 2005 where Facebook was the number one social media. I don't even think Facebook was around in 2005. I think it was MySpace. How many of you guys remember MySpace? I had a MySpace in 2005. It was the bomb. It had music on it. It had like car pictures. MySpace was super cool. But MySpace is no longer around. And guess what? Slowly but surely, Facebook has dropped all the way to the bottom of social media. So unless you're on the platforms where the millennials are, no one's that you're not going to teach anybody. You're not going to know. And that's my challenge. Any... Don't, don't, 
don't get me wrong. I'm not crap talking these big breeders. I'm just simply offering my criticism of how the hobby can improve. And people give me criticism all the time and I either take it or, or leave it at the moment. Criticism can actually be used to make you better if you will take the criticism. My wife, I'm bad at criticism. If someone criticizes me, I get offended. I feel hurt by that immediately. Whitney has been a performer all of her life. Sometime you'll have to ask her to sing for us. She has this jingle, geeky gecko creations or something that she comes up with. Anyway, Whitney's a performer. She had to sing opera for all of her life. She would get criticized after every single opera performance. Could you imagine putting in, I'm, I'm screaming again. Could you imagine putting in hours and hours of work and performances for a teacher to come back to you and be like, this wasn't good, this wasn't good, this wasn't good, you need to improve here, you need to do this differently. It, that would kill the average person. But Whitney takes that criticism and it makes her better for the next event. That's all that I'm offering to these bigger breeders that have not yet integrated into the newest content social media producing platforms is if I could offer you any criticism to make the hobby better and more popular, start that integration process or hire people who could help you get that process going. It's not that much money. You're already making tens of thousands of dollars a year breeding geckos. You could afford to pay somebody a couple hundred dollars to make you an Instagram, to run a YouTube page, to edit videos. You just have to put in the work to find those people who will do that. You go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R.com, and you can find logo designers, website designers, um, uh, what, what, was it, what else was I saying? YouTube content editors, you could find any of that kind of stuff. Social media marketers, you can find any of that on Fiverr.com for pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. So. Hey, OJH donated $10 for the lychee fund. Yay, 10 for the lychee. Uh, by the way, we are taking steps towards getting a pure new Ana lychee gecko imported into our collection, guys. It's happening. Uh, we're filling out the forms right now. It's going to cost a little bit of money, so thank you for giving us um, uh, whoever uh, who do, who donated the one ninety nine earlier, the one ninety nine and this ten dollars for the lychee fund, guys. We have a Nate's lychee fund geckos. now. Nate's geckos, guys. We have a lychee fund. If you want to help us get pure lychees imported from Holland, in the UK or Europe, I never knew there's a difference between UK and Europe. But there's a difference, okay? <laughs> I think it's in the UK. Holland is in the UK, uh, I think. No, right? it's in Europe. UK. Holland is in Europe. We have to get Lichianus geckos imported. If you don't know anything about Europe or the UK, they have such a passion for keeping bloodlines pure and everything. It's a great place to get purity out of. And we're getting two pure Nuana, which is the most colorful Lichianus leopard geckos from there. It's going to cost us a few hundred dollars to take care of shipping, paperwork, and handling. But if you are able or want to help contribute to that, you could donate by super chatting right now, the donate button, a sticker, or a comment, and just put lychee fund on there. And we will put that money towards the lychee fund. So thank you very much, OJ, for that reminder and that donation for the lychee fund. All right, we have... Questions? Oh, man, because I was, I was ranting for days... Don't worry, it's not about politics. Kevin Edwards says, I have a female gecko that's really aggressive. She's ovulating, but always bites the male. What should I do? Do they live together? It sounds like they live together. If they live together, I would recommend separating that gecko. Recently, I saw a picture that I will never forget. And I'm going to ask this person if it's okay for me to share the picture. It was a picture of a, a female gecko's arm almost ripped clear off from a male that was living with her. So when people ask about cohabbing geckos, you can do it, but just know there's always a risk for injury. I've heard of other people's injuries, mainly little bitings, 
tail nips, losing of the tail. But this was the worst that I've ever heard and seen. I actually got to see the picture of what happened with this gecko. The geckos were in a large tub. The geckos had multiple hides. And still, the male got a little bit rough with her and 75% ripped her arm off. And now that keeper is having to figure out what to do with the female who's currently, I'm screaming again, she's currently gravid. She has eggs inside of her while the male ripped her arm off. So my suggestion to people who are thinking about cohabbing, keep a close, close eye on those geckos. And if you see any signs of aggression, remove the male, put him in his own tub, leave the female in her own tub. When we breed leopard geckos here, every gecko is kept separate, as you can see. We take the female's um, accessories, we remove them from her tub, we then drop a male into her tub, we watch them breed for about 10 to 15 minutes, and we come back, we either watch them or I'm working in the room and I can hear them breeding. If I, if I hear any craziness, I'll go over to the tub and I'll look to see how crazy they're getting with each other. If the female constantly chases the male away, then I remove the male and try again on a different day. But my friend, the one who asked that question, it sounds like your geckos are living together. In that case, just be aware of the risks. I'm not going to say you can't do it. I'm not going to say that people haven't successfully kept geckos together. I will say I recently saw a picture of a female gecko with her arm 75% ripped off from a male gecko that was living with her. So those kinds of dangers can happen. <laughs> what? Yeah, Wally says you need a geography lesson. <laughs> oh, my wife is my geographist. Maybe I need a vocabularist too. Yeah, that too. I'm bad at geography, guys. Just so you know, if it wasn't apparent, I'm not good with geography. Unless it's in America. And if it is in America, Whitney hates when I promote America. <laughs> Even I though I hate when you promote America. No, Whitney just really hates. What does Whitney hate? You guys want to know what Whitney hates? <laughs> Whitney <laughs> hates. Whitney hates. What is? What's the word I'm thinking of? Whitney hates racial people. So I hope none of you guys are racist. Racist people. <laughs> racial. <laughs> yeah, racist people. Uh, that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, when you belittle somebody or look down upon them for race or status or whatever the case is, what is that called? Um, discriminate. Whitney hates discrimination. Like, she's super passionate against it, right? She's well, always... We all should be. No, but some people are more passionate about it than others. Whitney, so... Whitney loves other countries and hates America. I don't hate America. <laughs> because she thinks America discriminates too much. I don't hate America. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm being a little bit exaggerative. You guys know me by now. I, I do that. But, um, yeah, I, Whitney has a passion for refugees. She has a passion for, for pain and suffering that a lot of third world countries go through, um, or even our country, racial discrimination or, or any kind of discrimination. Whitney has a huge passion against that kind of stuff. So when I said America... That was me kind of joking with her because, again, I'm going to label this, a lot of people who are like America, America, are like the redneck, like Confederate type people, right? So hey, don't, don't. I'm just saying, hey. I'm just being honest where my, where my explanation is coming from. It's not that what I said is correct. I'm just saying, right? I mean, don't we could, stereotype. We, we could all poke fun at each other and make fun a little bit, but. In this country, there there are more American proud people that are more about America, and they tend to talk like America. They tend to talk like that. So that's why I was joking with Whitney about that. Okay, I just so you know, guys, I oh, our, our country has had many, 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 many long years of moments, but. You know, I'm so proud of our country overall. She's still a patriot. I'm still a patriot. She would just fight on the north, not on the south. Oh, are, what, are we back to the Civil War? There still are people that view that way, so I mean... Yeah. 
anyway, we love our rednecks. We love our um, collaboration and diversity, right? Just because I, dis- I, I I'm disagree. diverse myself. Just so. because I disagree with you does not mean I will. Tr- I will try, try not to hate you. That's a tough try, guys. Because if Whitney <laughs> disagrees with you, let me be the first to tell you, you're on her bucket list of hate. Bucket list? I don't know what that means. Hit list? <laughs> you're on her hit list. No, I really try, guys, because... I mean, really, in the grand scheme of things, nothing matters. You know? Like, that doesn't that doesn't matter. When we're all no longer here anymore, that is, that is that will be the least important thing. That's true. I mean, life is passing by. Everyone's individual lives as well as humanity's life. <laughs> all right. Bye, Wally. Have a great night. I'm not saying, um, you know equal rights isn't important. I'm not saying patriotism isn't important, but what I'm saying is like all of the crap and not only America, all the crap in all the world, when it all goes away and the apocalypse comes and we're all destroyed, like that's not going to matter anymore. We all get destroyed evenly, right? (laughs) Unless Jesus Christ is your savior. Just going to throw that out there. You know we're Christian around here. But again, that's a whole nother topic. A whole nother can of worms. What happy? Look at these little... Look at these beautiful little lemon frosts that people say the worst things about. Oh, those those are the worst animals. They got tumors. Their eyes are bulging out. Look at that. Look at that. I had one guy recently that told me he's like why don't you talk more about the lemon frost project you said you're gonna be giving updates etc and i was like well if you came to the live streams you would see that we talked about we talk about it and i show the geckos all the time yeah is it possible to like what what will you find in ultrasound will you find tumors uh I don't know, but it it would probably be too much um, money to have geckos ultrasound. I mean, we have that ultrasound. I think it's too big, though. That ultrasound is for snakes. So, by the way, one of the coolest things about breeding ball pythons is that you could buy an ultrasound kit for $1,000, and it's the greatest thing. You could ultrasound the belly of that snake and see if it's ready for breeding or not. It's fantastic. So... Um, you know, we are concerned about any health issue that would come to the geckos. Um, and of course, if there was anything wrong with the lemon frost, we would try and find a way to stop it or help that gecko in any way we could. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. And so the only reason we're working the Lemon Frost Project, when I first saw the Lemon Frost come out five years ago, I was like, oh, no, I'm, I don't want to work with that project. It, it's it's really, really bad. But then last year, I saw that there was certain um, breeders that were beginning to outcross the project further and further into pure bloodlines. And it was actually improving the health and quality of the animals dramatically not just a little bit dramatically and because of that i was like oh wait maybe there is more research to be done here and i began looking and nobody else is uh documenting this research nobody else is producing data so i was like okay at the very least i'm gonna collect these geckos i'm gonna keep outcrossing them i'm gonna breed them to other geckos and record All of that information so that the hobby as a whole can reference our videos and reference our data for the future so that they know if outcrossing works, kind of works, or doesn't work at all. Those are the results that we're going to produce 
uh, with breeding the the lemon frost project. So, you know, I think it would be really cool. I know this would, you know, unless we met like a vet who was a friend. Yeah. Um, I think it would be super cool if we had a vet just come and just check out all the animals because, uh, Frankie knows I would like, you know, I'm not the one who designs their living space. I'm not the one who knows what they need to eat and what they need to live in and everything. But if it was possible in a perfect world, I would love them to have more space. I really would. Um, whatever I'm cleaning, I try. I know Frankie tells me, like, you know, you don't have to get all the poop out when you're cleaning. I try. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I try. I like all the poop out. But no. I say if, if there's poo that you could easily wipe away or whatever, that's our new method now. But before, I used to be so OCD on getting all the poo out yeah. that I was over the top OCD about it. So that's what she means by she, she doesn't have to get all the poo out is if there's like a tiny piece stuck, you guys will see me right now. I'll wipe it away with the napkin and dump it. But if there's a bunch stuck, I'll take it to the bathroom and wash it. Yeah. I just got to clarify because I'm super OCD on cleaning the poo in their tubs. And I don't think so that's I had to. Thing. I, I, yeah, I had to pull myself back a little bit yeah. from, oh, oh, she, me here's what Whitney means is when, she, when she looks in the tub and there's like one or two poos on the newspaper, you don't have to change out the newspaper if there's one or two poos, but if there's four or five poos, we change out the newspaper. And if there's poo stuck to the plastic, we wash the plastic. So now I know what she means. I misinterpreted her, but, but yeah, we, like, we give I a lot of care and attention to making sure that as much poo is removed as possible because poo is the number one means of uh, parasites and bacteria and an unhealthy collection. So it's super important to me to get that poo out. Yeah. I mean, what I try to do is if there's, you know, any poo to just, you know, wipe it out um, so that there's like no poo left in there at all. Yeah. Because... And you do a great job at that. Uh, you and Brooke... Well, the gecko deserves the most clean space yeah. it can be in. So getting back to that, some of Whitney and I's very first arguments <laughs> were, believe it or not, over animal rights circumstances. <laughs> she was like, a tiger will never be happy in captivity. And I told her, hmm, do you think that tiger loves fighting for its life out in the wild? Do you think the amount of baby lion cubs that get eaten by competitor rival lion males like getting torn to pieces by these rival males and the females enjoy seeing their babies get cut to shreds. Whereas in captivity, all of that can be controlled and the animals can be more personable with humans. We used to fight over stuff like that. And she was like, no, they're better in the wild. They need more space. Blah, 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 blah. Well, okay. I still stand by that. <laughs> I don't think yeah. they're always in every situation better in the wild, but they do need more space. Yeah. I think they were created to be in the wild, but it's a fallen world. You know? We were created to be in the wild. <laughs> yeah, we're not meant to be cooped up in offices all the time. Oh, that's deep. No, that's deep, not. guys. The government got you confined as a capitalist. I'm By not, capitalist, oh I mean... God. They're capta captating you. What is That's it? In the same way a lion is captivated, they've captivated you to the office seat. I'm not even going there. Whitney like, said it. I'm not one of those people that's like, <laughs> oh, the government is making you do this, and the government is making you do that. Yeah, the government makes you pay income tax and all that stuff, but... But that's I'm, why we have good roads. I'm just too exhausted from political... <laughs> this has been such a political all. night. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, Nate, you do, you know, thank you for saying that. Um, you know, Frank informs himself about the Lemon Frost Project. Um, if there's, you know, ever something that he learns wrong, he, well, he goes back and relearns it. And, and other people 
you know, not everyone, but some people don't want to do that. They just want to stick with their original opinion and they don't want to do the work into putting in research. Yes, and research is, again, so necessary to the hobby moving forward. Now, I've said this from the start, and this is what I had to tell that person. There, That person was asking me, what, what are you going to do if, you know, two years from now, it proves that none of the lemon frosts are genetically clean? Like, it's impossible to separate that out. I was like, well, number one, I'm going to document it for the hobby so everybody knows that even if you outcross it's still going to be just as bad as if you don't outcross. So number one, I'm going to provide information for the hobby moving forward. Number two, I'm going to stop breeding them. Simple as that. As soon as I find out the answer to whether crossbreeding works or crossbreeding doesn't work, I no longer have a reason to breed them. I mean, if it works, great. We'll continue to breed them. If it doesn't work at all, we're going to completely stop breeding them. If it kind of works somewhere in the middle where you produce 75, 80, 90 percent reduced um, issued geckos, then that's going to be a decision that I'll have to make at that time. If I want to breed them a little bit and provide them for the hobby so that people are not breeding them elsewhere in, in the worst way possible, or if I just want to stop breeding them altogether. But... If you can see improvement by outcrossing them, I think there's something to study there. And I, at very least, want to document the path that this goes down. On top of that, I'm not going to scream. The lemon frost gecko has been used to study the relationship between cancerous areas of humans' DNA and the tumor output. So... The lemon frost leopard gecko is being used as medical research in the human world to better understand cancer. So on some level, somebody needs to breed lemon frost so that the studies can continue to increase medical awareness for the human community around the issue of cancer, right? Cancer is something that we've been trying to solve for decades in American society. And if we can increase our knowledge and cures for cancer by studying leopard geckos, zebra fish, and other animals that we've been studying cancerous outbreaks in. I think to some level there's merit there to breed those animals for those purposes. The only time I would do it is if the animals were not suffering. And you ask me, Frank, how do you know the animals are not suffering? To be 100% honest, I can't talk to this leopard gecko and say, hey, are you suffering right now? But here's what I can do. I can show you how this gecko looks and how this gecko acts. Beautifully shaped eyes. Beautifully shaped face. No skin tumors. Eats well, poops well, breeds well. All of these signs are indicators that the animal is not under severe stress. If an animal was under stress, it would not eat, it would not drink, it would not breed, it would not interact with you. Animals do not do this when they're stressed out. They get reclusive, they get overrun by parasites because the stress makes them weaker against the parasites that are already in their system naturally. So my supportive points for these geckos not suffering is they don't have any breathing problems. They don't have any eating problems. They don't have any breeding problems. That's breathing and breeding problems. They don't have any um, physical ailments or disabilities. Not that we can see. So, yeah, not that we can see, but again, I'm judging the animal's movement, the animal's alertness, the animal's comfort level. You know, leopard geckos are very finicky. If they're not comfortable, they're not going to breed. How many times has a female chased off a male because she doesn't want to breed at that moment? She's stressed out or uncomfortable. When geckos are stressed out or uncomfortable, 
they don't do well breeding. They don't have high fertility rates or they just don't breed at all. So if the animal is breeding and surviving, that tells you in of itself, it's not really in a stressed out situation. So prove me wrong. If there's anyone out there that can like um, illuminate me to a perspective that I'm not looking at, then, then by all means, please do. But I think it's pretty clear in human and animal worlds that when animals or humans are stressed out, you can tell, number one, and that affects their health and reproductivity, number two. And right now, we're not seeing any reproductive issues or any further health issues than we can tell from the original issues that took place with the lemon frost way back when, so. I, yeah, I really hope that they don't have any um, mental issues, you know, like, or genetic issues. That's, you know, not something we can see. Well, but, I mean. No, I can tell you right now, they don't have any mental issues. The only issue with lemon frost, here's the biggest thing that I'm trying to determine how we can figure out. The biggest issue with lemon frost is actually not the skin tumors. Uh, a gecko can live with the skin tumor. The biggest issue is if those tumors spread to hearts, organs. eyes, yeah. organs, lungs. Those are the biggest issues. In the original lemon frost that were studied back in generation zero, before they began being outcrossed, the worst of the worst did have tumors being reproduced on their lungs and internal organs. So when certain of these geckos naturally pass away and die, if that ever happens, because they seem to live long, lengthy, normal, healthy lives, when they pass away, we're going to try to donate them to scientific research to dissect them to see if there was tumors growing on the inside of them. That's going to be another data point that we collect at some point in the future. But I just want to say that I've never heard of a lemon frost gecko passing away because of tumors or natural um, natural situation, especially lemon frost that have been outcrossed the way that we're outcrossing. Maybe some of the originals that were inbred to each other, so genetic defects were piled on top of each other. Mom was bred to son. Daughter was bred to dad. Daughter was bred to granddad. Whenever you compile genetic issues on each other like that, you're, that's a recipe for disaster no matter what. Even in leopard geckos that are not lemon frost. And death can occur. But all of the leopard geckos that were donated to scientific research at UCLA, where this big study came out of, they were all killed in the name of research. Whichever ones they killed and dissected, they were killed in the name of research. They, didn't, they weren't allowed to live long lives and naturally pass away and no they were killed so that we can open them up they didn't die naturally so again that's another point that i bring up is most lemon frost we don't even know the life expectancy of lemon frost because it's such a young project but most of the ones that i'm aware of are five or six years old and still thriving and doing perfectly fine showing no life threatening issues all right, well, I think that might be a good... I don't see any more questions. Oh, really? Um, if you guys um, have any like last-minute, really important questions, feel free to drop them off. I think that's good for it tonight. Yeah, why don't you come here? We can say goodbye to everybody. Get away, sis. What's going on, I man? I could hold Effie. Long, controversial night. Lots of good discussion. Again, controversy... Let's lower this for Whitney here. Controversy is not bad. They can't even see your face. I know, that's a joke. <laughs> okay, Whitney, this is me, okay? This is me, the reptile, and this is the human I married. That's got to be a love story somewhere, like Marvel. Whatever that lizard doctor is from Marvel, that's what this is. So, anyway, um, Whitney and I thank you guys for being a part of our reptile family and community here. Our number one goal is to... Um, Keep promoting reptiles because we love them. Keep being inclusive and, and bringing people in 
um, even people that have opposing viewpoints and being willing to hear them out, listen to them, talk to them, uh, love on them and receive love from them. So that's our goal to, to, to help the community of reptiles take a step forward to be united against some of the issues we talked about tonight. If you did not hear the issues we talked about earlier, um, there are a lot of animal rights activists that are trying to take away the whole hobby's right to keep a leopard gecko, crested gecko, ball python. And um, those are the real enemies here, not other companies that see things a little bit differently than you. So we're going to call the live stream there for tonight. We look forward to seeing you guys next Monday. And, oh, in the meantime, I'm definitely going to be dropping some videos over the next couple days because I'm really excited. You're going to see something new at the beginning of our videos, and I'm excited to promote this company. And so let me know what you guys think. But we love you guys. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. And as Whitney and I like to say, have, have a, a geeky, geeky gecko, gecko great day. day. All right, guys. We'll see you later.